Hey, what is up everybody? This is Stevie Breach coming to you here today with the Raw 5 Point Preview coming up for the October 10th edition of Monday Night Raw. Leading up Monday Night Raw to the Hell in the Cell pay-per-view. Why is that? Oh, fuck me. Why? I don't know why that light's on. Weird. Um, but uh, good times here. Uh, WWE Monday Night Raw, fun stuff. Uh, last week we had the women main event, the show, um, with Sasha Banks going up against Charlotte in a killer match. Sasha wins the WWE Women's Championship for the second time on Monday Night Raw. Um, it was a great match. It was a great moment. It will surely be talked about, um, you know, in the history of Monday Night Raw for years and years to come as not only being, um, one of the few times the women have main evented Raw, but really stole the show and delivered the best match by far that we've seen in a long time. For so long, I don't know if it's just because the quality of uh, women that WWE signed for the Divas division didn't live up to what Sasha Banks and Charlotte is. Um... You know, they went with the Marisas, the Alicia Foxes, the Exanas, the, uh... Shit, what's her name? The the one that's worked there for like 10 years who's done nothing. Um, uh, but beyond uh, Total Divas, and now she's pregnant. She used to hump Doc Hendricks. I'm going to keep going with this until I can remember what the... Rosa Mendez. Um, you know, all that stuff. Um, it's, it's all balled up. Um, last week was, was one hell of a match. It's going to be a long time before we get a match on TV that lives up to that. The, the only women's match that I think that came close to that was... Taryn Terrell, well, the WrestleMania match was, was awesome three-way, but the Taryn Terrell versus Gail Kim, um, you know, they had two matches. One was a Falls Count Anywhere, I believe, and the other one was a ladder match on Impact, and uh, I thought both of those matches were awesome, and uh, that, that's that, that's the best women's match that I've really been into in a long time. Um, now we're on Monday Night Raw. We're going to have to find out when um, Charlotte is going to be getting a rematch. Lots of rumors out there that not only is this match going to be taking place at the Hell in a Cell pay-per-view, but they believe in these women so much that they're actually going to put them in the Hell in a Cell. And I am 100% uh, for, you know, everybody being equal. Uh, not putting people on different pedestals. I know that, you know, when you watched, uh, I believe it was the ladder match, volume two, um, there was a Beth Phoenix ladder match. Um, I'm not sure if it was from FCW or if it was from Deep South or Ohio Valley or where it came from, but somewhere in developmental, Beth Phoenix had a ladder match and it was on the DVD and um, some people liked it. I didn't think the match was that great. I think it was just sort of on there because it was a women's ladder match, which made it a little bit different. There's been rumors of maybe doing a woman's money in the bank for years. I don't know if that's just a fan rumor or actual real rumor, but um, I, I, I'm not 100% sure that I want to see the women go into Hell in a Cell. I know that you know within the last six years, um, WWE has scaled back what they do. Um, I know that, you know, like Undertaker and uh, Triple H, Triple H is in charge. He gets to do basically what he needs to do. They played within the rules. I believe there was one unprotected chair shot um, that both of them were, were fined for, but uh, they didn't get to, you know, gig um, the way that, you know, they would do in the early Hell in the Cells when, um, you know, blood was a must for those matches because they, they thought they, they put them over the top to make it better. And WWE doesn't really involve, you know, bleeding uh, unless it comes the hard way. Um, I, I, I'm not one that really thinks that a Hell in a Cell match has to have blood. But I think that what most people believe a Hell in a Cell match is going to be, I think if you put Charlotte versus Sasha in there and they deliver what is a really a good Divas women's match inside of the cell, I think people will say that it needed to be more. So I, I'm not 100% sure we put them in there. That, that That's just me. And I understand if you feel differently and you think that, you know, the women should have a chance to go in the hell in the cell and, 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 and try their best to, to do what they can do. But to me, like, I just watched the first two Hell in the Cell matches um, this week. I watched Sean uh, versus Undertaker, and I liked it so much that I, I went and I watched Mankind versus Taker. And just to see what the Hell in the Cell match has turned into now uh, with the PG version of WWE, I really don't understand why they still do it. 
because it just isn't what it once was and it's living on the legacy of what it was 20 years ago. Um, from there, we go to Owens versus Rollins, uh, which is, looks like it's going to be the match for Hell in the Cell as well. Um, you know, there's been rumors of Jericho getting into, into this match or getting into this feud. Last week, Jericho was trying to get Kevin Owens to team with him to go up against the New Day to win the tag team titles. During that promo, um, Chris Jericho, once he was turned down by Kevin Owens, brought up the fact it's not like I'm challenging you for your Universal Championship, um, which was sort of the kicker to get Owens to get into there and you can really tell that, that even though that they play best friends on television, Jericho wants to be the champion. Jericho doesn't want to be the best friend. He wants to be number one and we'll have to see how the story works him getting into there. I think there's still three weeks until we get to um, the actual Hell in the Cell pay-per-view. Um, so we'll see how they put that together. Rusev versus Reigns, that's going to be a Hell in the Cell match that was announced last week. I honestly really don't know what you do to um, make this feud more interesting, to make it last three more weeks to get to there. So I don't know what you do with those guys. They'll just be on the show. Hopefully they'll wrestle in different singles matches and they're not really involved with each other because they're going to beat the piss out of each other in three weeks. Why watch each other? Why, why watch them? beat each other up for three weeks to get to the Hell in the Cell match. Just have them be there, maybe do promos, maybe have a match, beat the piss out of some cruiserweights. I, I don't know, but uh, it is what it is. Um, then from there, we go to Braun Strowman, who's looking for tougher competition for Monday Night Raw. The word on the street is that I've heard that Luke Harper is going to be returning at uh, Monday Night Raw, and he's going to be going up against Braun Strowman. It's a shame for the Wyatt family. At one point, the Wyatt family was Bray Wyatt, Luke Harper, Braun Strowman and um, Eric Rowan and it just seemed at one point I think Eric Rowan got hurt first then from there Luke Harper got first uh, got hurt uh, Bray got hurt somewhere during this time I think that Braun Strowman is the only guy who's been injury free the whole time but you've never really had these guys to be able to be together now that Luke Harper is going to be returning from his injury Eric Rowan just went out with his injury everybody wants to see the Wyatts together everybody wants to see Bray Wyatt be strong but for some reason, it, it's just not going to happen. Honestly, in my opinion, I think that Luke Harper, Eric Rowan, and Braun Strowman, all three of them, the only way that I care about them is with Bray. And that's funny because I don't care about Bray. So it is what it is. Um, and then from there, we'll end up with the Cruiserweights. It's going to be Brian Kendrick versus TJ Perkins. Uh, Kendrick earned his championship shot by beating TJ Perkins last week in a non-title match on Monday Night Raw. Um, I think that that's going to be announced even though at one point the Kendrick versus Perkins match for Raw was announced to be a championship match. Somewhere along the way, it was changed to get Kendrick into there. It seems to me that Kendrick is the one guy in the cruiserweight division that really gets a good pop from every place that he goes. Um, I think that's just because the name value that he has in, in, in the past, being a, a former world heavyweight champion, winning it in a, a scramble match, holding the belt for, I believe, about two, three minutes. Um... I don't know. You've been able to watch Monday Night Raw. The crowds in these cities, they sit through one cruiserweight match and they like it. But for some reason, the second one they come out, even if it's the high, high class, more um, star power, more cared about match, they'll shit on it. So um, we'll see what happens with this one. Uh, Kendrick's going to face TJ Perkins at the pay-per-view, I'm pretty sure. I still think that Perkins is going to win this feud. I think that Perkins is the guy with the belt. He's going to hold it for a while. I don't see them putting the Cruiserweight Championship on TJ Perkins after winning the Cruiserweight Classic and then passing the belt around like a hot tomato. Um, I'd like to see... Um, what's that guy's name? Tony D? Tony... Tony... Fuck. I can honestly tell you, I did not know who he was until he was on Raw. There's a lot of people who watch a lot of indie guys that knew who he was and really liked the fact that he's there. I want to see Cedric Alexander get a push. I want to see Rich Juan get a push. Um, those are the guys that I like. But I'm up for watching the Cruiserweights do whatever they got to do to get over. So that's going to be October 10th, Monday Night Raw preview. I am going to be going to No Mercy. I did just find out that now the World Heavyweight Championship match is going to be kicking off the show for some fucking idea. That's the fucking main event. So I'm going to miss it because I don't get off work in time even if I leave early. So um, I'm going to be taking a buddy with me. Um, thank you to at DJ J-O-D. Um, I believe he's out of Stockton for hooking me up with a, uh, a ticket to the show. 
we're gonna have a ton of fun. Where we'll start filming the day in the life the second we walk out of Rayleigh's, and um, we're gonna live it up. So I'll see you guys down the road Monday Night Raw, building up to Hell in the Cell.